Hello, this is Jennifer Boucher reporting from Loyola Marymount University. Long distance relationships are difficult for couples when they do not see each other for extended periods of time. I interviewed three LMU students who jumped from long distance relationships to short distance relationships over the year. Senior biochem major Coralie Eilers discusses the hardship she encounters when her relationship with her boyfriend Kevin changes from short distance over the school year to long distance over the summer. Honestly, I never really adjusted, <laughs> which is bad, but I just struggled with it continuously. Like every day was a horrible day because I didn't get to see him, but I guess what made it work is I knew that every single night we would be able to talk with Skype and just getting into that routine made it a lot easier, just like knowing that, okay, I'll be able to talk to him at eight o'clock tonight or something like that. But no, it was really hard, <laughs> definitely was. Whether in California, Illinois, or even France, social media and technology help Coralie and Kevin keep in touch and maintain their relationship. Kevin explains how this means of communication helps their relationship. I would definitely say it helps, especially during the tough times when we're apart because I know Skype has gotten us through all those long distance periods and I can't really imagine not being able to see her for that long. And then just text messages and Google chat throughout the day helps keep connected. It never feels like a burden, like I need to keep my phone because I need to be texting her all the time. I can always set it aside if I want, but it's, it's good to stay in contact with her. Like Coralie and Kevin, some couples at LMU are short distance during the school year and long distance over the summer. Other couples have the reverse, with long distance during the school year and short distance over the summer. Sophomore business major Caitlin Ruby is one LMU student who only sees her boyfriend Buddy during vacations from school. Caitlin discusses what it's like jumping from long distance over the school year to short distance over the summer. So coming from a long distance relationship from Los Angeles and going back home to the Bay Area and having a short one is definitely the easy part because I get to come home and see Buddy and we basically hang out every day or as much as we can if we don't have work or you know he doesn't have basketball. So it's definitely time to catch up and you know, just hang out with each other and make up for the time that we didn't have when I was in school. And coming back to Los Angeles, um, leaving home for school is definitely difficult because um, I was so used to, or I'm so used to seeing him like every day and then I have to see him, you know, every few months or sometimes two or three weeks and we just have to adjust from seeing each other and like you know having physical contact to basically restricting ourselves to texts or calls or you know like sometimes Facebook messages just whatever is available so it's definitely difficult but I mean it's doable. At the beginning of their relationship Caitlin and Buddy would use Facebook to communicate more often than other forms of social media. Now they use Instagram, Twitter, and FaceTime to keep in touch. Caitlin explains how Instagram and Twitter help and hinder their relationship. So both my boyfriend and I use Instagram and Twitter the most. We don't really use Facebook that much. Um, or we used to use Facebook in the beginning of our relationship, but once we like got into college, we sort of drifted off into like the easier ones like Instagram where you just post something, a picture really quickly or Twitter where you just tweet like random text. So for Instagram, it actually helps our relationship because sometimes like I'll be out with my girls and I will, I'll like post a picture or something and he can see where I'm at and like who I'm with if I'm not able to text him. And I think Twitter has hindered our relationship because that's where both of us go to vent about some of our fights. Or we'll just, there's something called a subtweet when you talk about someone indirectly and usually I know who he's talking about because I'll be the one fighting with him and then he'll post some nasty thing on Twitter about you know our fight. So Twitter has hindered our relationship but Instagram has helped it so far. 
So take out those laptops and smartphones, sign in to your social media accounts, and stay connected with your significant other. This is Jennifer Boucher reporting from Royal and Marymount University. Back to you at the studio.